Hi, long time no see. I just bought these headphones and I wanted to show them to you, which is why I was wearing them. They're so cute though. They're very Pinterest. I couldn't resist. I've been, I mean like I've been wanting to buy these forever and I just like had it and I finally got them. Like why am I spending my money on my student loans? I thought money was supposed to be fun. Here is my very put together video script. This video has been in the works for a while now. A lot of you know this. I was like doing polls on like what videos you wanted to see. And this is the video that y'all wanted to see the most every time I put it in a poll. So we're finally doing it. This is your imperfect guide to hiding your chest without a binder, with a binder. We're gonna go through all of the options that I've tried and I'm gonna tell you like what I do to minimize the boobage and maximize the feeling good. Also just FYI, this may or may not be helpful for people with larger chests than me. I'll talk about my boob size in a second. <laughs> I don't know how your body works. I just know how my body works and the things I can do to minimize what I have going on. But just because my advice might not be applicable to like every single person on this planet, doesn't make me like not want to share it for the people who like are going to benefit from my methods and such. So if this doesn't help you, I'm sorry, but I, I think you'll find at least something that will be helpful for you no matter your size and shape okay so we'll talk about binders later but first let's talk about bras because even if you're not wearing a binder your bra choice can make a huge difference so bras with underwire or more shaped cups add volume so you definitely want to avoid those choices if you're trying to minimize your chest these styles are just going to be sabotaging you i really recommend therefore that if you can't use the other binder options that i'm suggesting that you opt for a bralette style instead of just a regular bra i feel I feel like a lot of people have shifted over to this already anyway. Personally, I just feel like they're more comfortable. I really like the triangle shape. I feel like it de-emphasizes my chest the most doesn't add any volume make sure you take those pads out we don't want any padding and tighten those straps tighten straps can be a little hard on the shoulders and i'm not saying you should be extreme with it by any means but tighten straps can shave a little bit off your bust size also by like lifting ironically i feel like this kind of helps hide my chest more um, because it de-emphasizes the volume down here at the bottom i'll talk about that in a second i also have one from parade that's in the sort of this sports bra shape that i usually wear under white shirts i feel like it just kind of like compresses me an amount, but like not that much. It's not the most comfortable because it does trap sweat, but it gets the job done. And for context, I wear a size like 32D. I've had people like try to argue with me in my comments about the size of my boobs <laughs> because they do not believe me. If I want my chest to look flat, I have to put in effort. I can't, it's just, I'm not, I'm not gonna be hiding it unless I'm trying to. And it doesn't look completely flat even when I'm wearing a binder. I get really jealous of people with itty bitty titties because I feel like they have it all. So I have to trick the eye to hide my chest. So let's talk about layering, which is I feel like what everyone suggests when it comes to hiding your chest without a binder. So the main shape that we are trying to hide, which is not actually just the volume of your chest, is the outside curvature of your breast. Breast, chest, boob. <laughs> Tish. Sorry, I'm having a lot of trouble today. I can't I honestly like don't like using words like boob or breast uh, I think probably some of you relate like it just feels too feminized Which is why I'm trying to say chest a lot, but sometimes you need the other words So hiding that outside curvature can go a long way This this had this has been such an epiphany for me And one of the features of the gc2b binder I have is this fabric that kind of hangs down and creates this flat edge So you're not seeing any of that outside curvature even if you're not completely flat So baggy clothing is the way that a lot of us achieve with this look of just Am ambiguity. But the fit of your t-shirt does matter a lot. If it's too long or heavy, the fabric is gonna hang down and drag over the front of your chest. And it's ultimately just gonna like emphasize that something is sticking out there. This shirt is a miracle. Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm trying to demonstrate these things and you literally can't see it with the shirt. The print color and thickness of the shirt also make a huge difference. Lighter colors, in my experience, tend to show more shape. Well, darker colors hide shape more and certain prints might also hide shape a little bit more. This is a dark shirt I have with this butterfly graphic on it that somehow hides my chest incredibly well. It's also double panel fabric, which I feel like conforms less to the shape of my body. It really has kind of its own structure. So this is a white shirt, which would normally show shape a little bit more in my experience. However, the cut of this one is great because it has a little more room in the chest, so it's not hugging 
my breasts and the graphic kind of takes the attention away from that the crop also means there is an extra fabric dragging down over the top of my chest because if you have a really long baggy oversized shirt you might have experienced this you might know what i'm talking about that fabric kind of gets weighted down and ends up just being against your body so it doesn't have this like structure that keeps it from just hugging you and here are two examples of just some like very large oversized shirts that don't hide my chest very well if the shirt is so large that you have a lot of fabric hanging down below your chest this is going to emphasize it more one way you can actually like fix this is by like cropping your shirts at your waist a lot of large t-shirts are just like really long and i'm not saying you should make a crop top like feel free to if that's what you want but if you just like cut it off like a little below your waist you might be getting rid of like inches of fabric that are just like adding to the weight and like not helping you you can also tuck your shirt in so that there's something that kind of like gathering and holding up the fabric of the shirt and of course if the shirts aren't doing it you can always opt for bigger options like hoodies in my experience the thicker the fabric the less shape you're gonna see this goes for shirts this goes for hoodies this goes for everything because the clothing itself has its own structure i have this really thick hoodie that hides my chest i guess so well to the point where someone was arguing with me on instagram about how big my boobs were they were like you can't possibly have boobs that size because that's my chest size and i could never that would never do anything for me saying they wish they had a flat chest like me and by no means do i have a flat chest i just don't it was something about the angles the posture the hoodie everything and i definitely was not wearing a binder so those are just some examples of how your clothing can make a big difference the thick fabric is my go-to i love shirts with a fit where there's just more fabric in this area so that there's less room to hug i also love shirts with like a graphic like this that are just gonna like take the attention away from what's going on over here but like just to give an example there are some shirts that i just like know i can't wear because of the fabric is a bit thinner like this shirt which i i wish i could wear this is a cool printed shirt i got in an event but the fabric is just like on the thinner softer side and that just doesn't work for me in terms of feeling gender good and i just know i can't wear it which is sad maybe if i wore like a turtleneck under it i could wear it but that's the situation i'm working with it's weird the section is titled layering and yet i'm not seeing much about layering i'm just seeing about the fit of shirts so let's talk about layering you can add that extra structure by adding like a long sleeve shirt under your t-shirt a turtleneck sweater adding an over shirt to kind of like hide that outside breast shape maybe a vest like a button up and a sweater vest cute sweater vests make everyone look lumpy unless you like buy a sweater vest that like specifically like snatches you so that's the layering advice you get i was mainly talking about the fabric though my credentials is that i am a fashion content creator so let's talk about some compression on the chest we're gonna start with compressive sports bras and compression tops because to me this is kind of the same category honestly so for compressive sports bras because i feel like this is the most accessible option to people some of these are going to be more flattening than others i think you can like look up online look at the model photos see how weird their boobs look like do they look flattened and if they do, that's the one you wanna get. Don't wanna get anything with like shaping or padding, but ones that like really like high impact. And you can find these anywhere and in person. I feel like this is a really good option for people who are younger and might still be developing. So you don't wanna put too much compression on your chest or for people who are unable to buy options that are specifically like gender affirming. Basically, you don't have to come out to buy a compressive sports bra. I feel like it's pretty normal to have one of those. So you can just be like, ma, I need, I need a sports bra. Go to Target, buy the one that seems like I like that thick fabric that's gonna like really compress you down and a nice thick band at the bottom. This one I have right here is from Gymshark. I bought it specifically to be compressive. I've also heard of people going like one size down in these and that doing like a lot. Um, I can't personally vouch for that method because I also don't know like if that's super safe. Know your own limits, please. And then here is a compression top. This one is from Tomboy X. I have the adjustable strap one. I have a bunch of videos, by the way, guys, of me like comparing different options side to side of compression tops versus compressive sports bra versus my binders. So I'll leave, I'll, I'll link that at the end of this video or something. So I have this one and honestly, it is about the same functionality as a compressive sports bra. You can really go with one or the other, like this one's specifically like gender affirming so that might feel good to you for me like the effectiveness is just exactly the same it might be that mine is like a size too big for me or something i got like my regular size for this so i got a medium maybe i could have gotten a small and it would do a better job but i also find this one just like not 
particularly comfortable in terms of the seam and the material the compressive mesh like it just feels like couldn't you just do that with like a thicker fabric that's more stretchy <laughs> which i guess is exactly what this option is it's just like a thicker more stretchy fabric it's possible this one's too big for me and that's why it doesn't do anything for me but it just is the same as a compressive sports bra. You don't need a special compression top. Sorry, just dragging Tomboy X through the mud. I don't mean to do that. Like, I would love to work with you, Tomboy X. I would love to work with you, but I have to be honest about this. So now that we've talked about the ways that you can de-emphasize your chest using what you might have in your closet or more accessible clothing options, let's talk about binders. So for a while, I feel like GC2B had a lot of attention in terms of the binder market, in terms of the queer community. And this is maybe like no longer the case. Let me get mine. <laughs> this probably has deodorant stains on it, but you get the idea. This is my GC2B at Binder. I have like the racer back iteration in black. And honestly, this binder just isn't for me. I don't love the material on the inside. The seams could be better. And also this binder feels like it might be too small for me, which is maybe why I feel the way I do about it. I did my measurements correctly and like picked a bigger size. So it's kind of confusing to me that I would end up with something that feels like too small and uncomfortable for me when I like purposefully picked a bigger size. And I've heard people say that allegedly the sizing is like not consistent and that the quality has taken a downturn as of late. But even without like those opinions, I, I'm just not the biggest fan of this binder. It was my first one. I liked the fact that it did its thing, but it just like wasn't my favorite. The thing I do really like about this binder is there's a little extra fabric that hangs down that creates a like flat edge and makes my chest overall look a lot flatter. So I think that's a really awesome feature for this design. And I also want to say like, I'm not sure if the quality of these is taking a downturn or anything like that. I'm not sure if the sizing is actually inconsistent, but that's what people have been saying about these binders. I don't want to like drag their name because like, I don't know if that's true, but if if people have been saying it, it might be kind of true. So let's talk about the binder that I actually do really like and the one that I wear if I'm going to be wearing a binder. And that is this one from Wona Bobby. This is a zip front binder. Now let's talk about it. Zip up binders have a bad rap. You can Google it. Some of you probably have already like heard about this and you just think like all zip up binders are like dangerous and bad for you. But basically they have a bad reputation because one brand's design was bad. It was causing problems because the tension wasn't distributed evenly. I think the zipper was on the side for that one makes sense why it wasn't distributed evenly but i will reiterate that that does not mean that every zip up binder is going to be unsafe just because one was bad doesn't mean that they are all bad and i've honestly found the zip up option to be a lot better for me for a lot of reasons i personally like this one because the material for the back is like really stretchy it's pretty soft and the thing i love the most about it is that it's really easy to put on and take off getting my gc2b binder over my head is honestly a bad experience i hate it. it's like putting on a wet swimsuit that is too tight the whole experience of putting it on is just like frustrating and hard <laughs> whereas with this the experience of putting it on is like maybe a little tricky but not hard it doesn't frustrate me in the way that this one does and i don't want to feel all worked up immediately after i put on a binder because it's already like gonna be making me feel caged in so i don't need like that frustration right at the beginning to set the tone for the entire time i'm wearing it i also love this option because I can and I have taken binder breaks when I'm just like out and about in public because it is so easy to just unzip it. I can literally go into a bathroom stall and unzip it under my shirt and just like stay there for a couple minutes. Or honestly, if I'm wearing a big t-shirt, I can just, if I'm like out to eat or whatever, I could just unzip it under my shirt. No one would know. It would be fine. So that's an extremely valuable feature to me because honestly just like makes the whole experience easier. It makes it feel less stressful. Like I know I can always take it off immediately if I have to. It's not gonna be a whole thing of I need to take off my shirt, I need to take off everything. I can just reach under my shirt and unzip it and the compression is gone. So if I was having an emergency where it needed to get unzipped right now, I could do that and like I would be totally fine. And I find that feature useful every single time I wear it. It means that I get to take more frequent breaks because it's not like I'm taking it completely off every single time. There's like construction happening on my street. 
I don't think you can hear it, but it, I can hear it. The one thing about the GC2B one I like a little more is the extra fabric hanging down as I described earlier. This one sort of hugs the side of my chest when it's on. Um, it also kind of curves out a little bit. <laughs> I think that's just the construction. So it does a good job of flattening me, but it doesn't kind of remove that um, boob shape on the side. And one thing I want to say about this particular binder from this brand, they sent this to me, so I got this for free. I have an affiliate link, which I will put down below if you want to buy this binder, but big butt, big asterisk right here, right in the middle of this video. They claim on the website that this binder isn't going to cause any like chest deformity over time and I don't know how they can possibly make that claim without having done trials and I honestly don't think it's true. Something that you need to think about when it comes to binding with really any option is the fact that it will lead to a change in your breast tissue. It might stretch out your boobs a little bit or make them sag among like other changes and I personally do not bind with my binder very often at all because of this. I keep it to specific occasions when I really want to feel that gender euphoria and I really opt for the other options I have for minimizing my chest on most days. So for me, a binder is a special occasion thing. For you, it might not. For you, it might be like, I'm a trans man and I need my chest to look flat always and I don't care about my boobs changing. Like, if that is you, good for you. <laughs> That's not me though because I like my boobs the way they are. <laughs> but I also hate them sometimes. It's also really important when you're ordering a binder online because you're probably gonna be buying it online. I can't think of many places in person where you would be buying this and this is like a specialized store. But another thing that's really important is doing your measurements. You can either use a piece of string, you can lay out and measure, or you can get like a sewing measuring tape, you know, just like a body measuring tape. That's what I have. I honestly use it a lot. I think it's a great investment because like whenever I'm getting any kind of clothing thing online, I use it to make sure I'm getting the right size for that brand because clothing sizing is so inconsistent for brands. So I recommend like just buying one of those, but if you're gonna wake up every day and measure your waist or something, don't don't own one of those. And of course I need to mention binding safety. I talked about binder breaks earlier. I don't really have a good guide for this because like honestly, I'm not wearing my binder for full days. Like a lot of people say like cap it at eight hours, don't do more than eight hours. I'm gonna try to find like a guide and link it in the description because like honestly I don't know all the details. I know you're not supposed to wear it, get it wet, and you're not supposed to work out in it. There's a lot of things to not do in your binder for your own safety, for your respiratory health, and for your physical health. Respect your nervous system, okay? But my best advice is just like listening to your body when it comes to like needing breaks or just like if your body is telling you you need to take it off for the rest of the day, listen to your body. You can always bring another chest support option that is less compressive for if you need to take your binder off if you're out and about somewhere and for the love of god do not sleep in your binder if you lay down in bed and you're thinking like uh like, i'm not gonna fall asleep i'm just a little sleepy take off your binder and take a nap take a nap you probably need a nap i wouldn't be surprised if you get more exhausted throughout the day wearing a binder because you're kind of working harder with everything. So let's take a minute to talk about trans tape, which is actually an option that I myself have not tried, but it seems like such a great option, especially because you can wear kind of like open shirts and you're not going to see the binding happening. I just know myself and I don't think that trans tape would be a very good sensory experience for me. I'm not like the most sensitive when it comes to clothes. That was a lie. I was just saying a lie and I had to cut myself off. I am sensitive, but not about the same things that a lot of people are sensitive about in their clothing. I can't wear fabric that's too soft. <laughs> it's not about the seams for me. It's about the seams for a lot of people, but not for me. But I know that trans tape would probably just be kind of a hard experience for me to have. I hate it when there's like things sticking to me, <laughs> which is kind of the whole point. And I'm also scared of getting blisters, which is totally a thing that happens to people when they use trans tape. Make sure you around those corners, guys. That being said, I do want to try it at some point because I feel like I could feel so sexy in trans tape. I just feel like I need a good occasion for it when I want to like feel and look so sexy. Cause there's this kind of a commitment once you put it on, you know? I've heard about this hack. I'm gonna share this hack with you, trans tape babies. I have heard people t say to use tattoo wrap under the trans tape without any compression going on. Don't, don't stretch that. This is like post tattoo care. You put this like sheet on yourself. That's what it is for people that know. But if you put this on under the tape with like zero tension, apparently it makes it a lot easier to like remove the tape. Even if you just like didn't put it over your boob, but like at the edge or something, so that it's easy to like peel up one edge. That seems like such a good hack. I have no credentials. Yeah, I do want to try trans tape, but like I just, it's just a lot, so. 
Yeah, but I wanted to include that as an option because a lot of people love that as an option. All right, let's talk about posture. If you are standing straight up, shoulders back, the boobs are out. They are perky. And a lot of us who want to hide our chest have perfected the slouch. Stretching your shoulders forward, bringing your chest back away from the front of your shirt so that your shirt can just like hang down and create a flat surface or a flatter surface. Not everyone can do this. If you have a really large chest, this, this isn't going to do much for you probably. And it's also not great for your back or your neck or your shoulders. There are pros and cons. Do I still slouch? Absolutely. I absolutely do. But the wisdom that I have to share with you about posture that I learned from somebody on the internet, probably with credentials, maybe not, is that no posture is bad posture. The only bad posture is one posture held for too long. So keep that spine moving. If you find that you are just slouching the entire day, make sure before you go to bed that you stretch it out, okay? Really loosen up those shoulders. You know, once you start doing it, you'll notice what feels like good and what feels like it needs a stretch. If this helped you out, feel free to comment down below. I would also love to hear from you if you have a larger chest and if you have advice on how to maximize gender euphoria, especially if you can't really minimize your chest that much or the ways specifically that you help minimize. So just just let us all know. <laughs> I would love to hear because I know I get comments from people who are like, oh, this doesn't really work for me. My body is different. I have more curves than you. I recognize I'm so if you have ways that you maximize gender euphoria, share that with the class. I would love to hear. Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.